Hello, in a few minutes today I'm going to cover aircraft components and parts of an air or parts of an aircraft or airplane. I've seen a lot of good sources, uh, websites, books, even unfortunately professors overcomplicate things because they tend to overload people with way too much information all at once. For example, if you Google parts of an airplane, this is what comes up. Again, good sources, NASA, etc. Wall of text or an image that is loaded with information to begin with. I think the better way to do it is to go step by step. And that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to do it in an unconventional manner. I'm going to use just these three images of a B787. And I'm going to use Microsoft Paint. It's uh, uncanny, but I can show you that it works just fine. Okay. No matter what you're flying, you're always going to need some sort of an airfall to fly. So you always need wings. But wings don't create lift by themselves. They need forward speed. Something is required to give us that thrust. That something on an airplane are going to be these red things. These are called engines. And before I forget, I'm going to say wings bracket for lift. And engines are also known as power plants and engines create thrust that you look for to create the lift for you from your wings. Of course when you want to fly you want a something that you can carry your payload in, passengers, cargo, etc. This is known as the fuselage. And the fuselage helps you carry your payload. Okie doke. So you're up in the air, you have thrust, and you're carrying whatever it is that you want to carry with you. When you're in the air, more often than not, you're going to come across winds. Sometimes these winds are going to be directly perpendicular to your direction of travel. So if you're going forward and you, have, you encounter a wind that's coming from the right, the aircraft will, because the center of gravity is you know, somewhere over here, that wind is going to cause a rotating moment and your aircraft will want to rotate that way. To counter that, we have something called the vertical stabilizer and it's this, the black and the purple thing combined together. And the vertical stabilizer works like this. If, you're, if your aircraft, because of the crosswind, is starting to rotate in this plane, the vertical stabilizer will now start to look like that because it rotates with the plane. But because it is no longer directly facing into the wind, it is at some angle, it creates lift. This lift, again, because it is further away from the center of gravity, is going to create a counter-rotating moment that's going to rotate the plane back. So no matter which way the plane tends to rotate, the vertical stabilizer will create lift the other way. By the same token, you can also have buffeting winds in the up or down direction, or at some weird angle. Now, for the weird angle, the horizontal component is stabilized here by this, the tail section, the vertical stabilizer. The vertical wind can cause a bobbing up and down of the aircraft. It's not comfortable. You can stabilize that by using a horizontal stabilizer. The gray and the pink area, both of them together, are called the horizontal stabilizer. That's an O. And the way it works is, again, if you have a buffeting wind, say, upwards, here and the aircraft's center of gravity is here, this wind is going to want to rotate the aircraft upwards. When it tries to do that, the horizontal stabilizer is now going to be tilted. Because again it's no longer facing straight into the wind, because of its angle it creates this lift vector which being away from the center of gravity tends to create that counter rotating moment downwards, pitching the aircraft back into the wind. And the same thing works the other way around as well. So now we have vertical stability and horizontal stability. What if we actually want to move the aircraft? This is where we go to control surfaces. The very first and simplest movement is turns. Now, what do you do? Just wings are not going to help. What you have to have is these orange control surfaces. These are known as ailerons. And ailerons take care of your roll. Both of these ailerons move in opposition to each other. One goes up and the other goes down. So for if my right aileron lifts up 
and my left aileron is bent downwards, deflected downwards. Left aileron, because it moves downwards, creates a larger camber on the left wing. This larger camber creates more lift on the left wing. The right aileron is now acting as a spoiler, something to reduce the lift on this wing. So the left wing has more lift than the right wing does. And because of this, the whole aircraft will want to rotate to the right. And the same thing works backwards. If I deflect the right downwards and lift the left aileron up, then the aircraft will want to rotate to the left. If you want to be able to rotate the aircraft side to side, like here, you know, from this way or this way, there's another control surface, this one here, the indigo or purple control surface, and this is known as the rudder. The rudder takes care of your yaw. Suppose we deflect it just to the right. What happens is now that that airfoil, which was previously symmetrical to the you know, direction of the wind, is no longer symmetrical. Now it has a camber, and because of that camber, it creates a lift vector. Because of this creation of lift, which is away from the center of gravity, this aircraft has a rotating moment this way. So the whole thing will want to yaw to the right. And if you deflect the rudder to the left, the entire aircraft will want to yaw to the left. What if we want to actually pitch the aircraft up or down? These surfaces will help us do that, the pink ones. These surfaces are known as elevators. And elevators take care of your pitch. And they work in much the same way as the ailerons do, with one exception. Ailerons move in opposition, elevators move in unison. They both either move down or both move up. You're in a straight and level flight, and you deflect the elevators downward. It's no longer a straight airfoil, it has this massive camber. And because of that camber, it creates lift. And because it creates this lift, which is away from the center of gravity, it's going to create that rotating moment to pitch the aircraft down. If you want to pitch the aircraft up, you deflect both elevators up, giving you negative lift, or lift in the downward direction, now causing you to have a rotation or a pitching moment upwards on the nose. Okay, so you got engines that create thrust, wings that use that thrust to create lift, the fuselage that is attached to the wings, uh, which also has engines attached to it and carries your payload. You have the vertical and horizontal stabilizer that gives you stability. You have the rudder that allows you to yaw the aircraft. You have ailerons that allow you to roll the aircraft. And you have elevators that allow you to pitch the aircraft up and down. What if you want to slow down your airspeed? These control surfaces, the blue ones, these are called spoilers. And spoilers act exactly the way you think. They spoil the airflow over the wing. If I deflect my spoiler upward, it's now going to have this massive blockage from the air. And this blockage of the air causes a huge reduction in airspeed. And this reduction in airspeed will also you know, destroy some of the lifts on the wing, and the aircraft will start to descend. But now what if you want to do the opposite? Suppose you're going very slowly. Suppose you're coming in for a landing where you have to go slow and low. You want to be careful here because you don't want to lose all lift while landing. Otherwise, you're going to come crashing down. To create lift at very low speeds, we have another set of deployable surfaces, the yellow ones, and they, these surfaces are called flaps. Flaps not only work in unison, they also deploy further down than the elevators. See, for example, at the back, elevators will only do a deflection of about maybe 10 degrees or a little bit more. Flaps can be deployed all the way down to 50 or 60 degrees, giving that wing a really, really large camber. And this massive camber enables the wing to create lift at very low speeds. So when you're coming in slow and low, you will want to absolutely deploy your flaps to create that little bit of lift that you absolutely need just before you land. And when you come in down for landing, obviously you need something to land on. This here is your landing gear, gear for short, sometimes also called as the undercarriage. And the undercarriage is nothing but a fancy word for landing gear. Landing gear can come in all shapes and sizes and also a lot of complexities. Uh, look up the Antonov Brya for a particularly massive landing gear. Compare that to the Cessna's uh, comparatively tiny landing gear. Landing gear can also be skis or floats if you're landing on snow, ice, or water. For most helicopters, landing gears are nothing but a pair of skids. And if you've covered everything that there is to cover in an aircraft component system without having to overload anyone. So if you go back, for example, to this picture here, I've covered everything here and in this paragraph 
step by step using nothing more than three images of an aircraft in MS Paint. Thanks for watching. Please comment as always, subscribe to my channel if you want, and suggest your ideas for a video. They have been very helpful so far. I've had lots of fun making this one. Thank you. Have a good one.